Hello and welcome to today's video. As you can see, we've got something a little different on the workbench today. So uh, back on well, many months ago, uh, lithium ion upgrade for the Selector E10 part number 23. I think that was when I got my new battery pack, or my second battery pack. It came with this connector and I had mentioned, hey, you're going to be really cool if, uh, if I uh, made a little device that could read out the batteries, or read out read out all the cells uh, in the battery pack because one of my friends who's converting a uh, VW Golf uh, borrowed my entire DMOC adapter my entire setup that you see in all the videos he borrowed that whole thing uh, had to lug a big battery with him and everything because he needed 12 volts uh, so he could hook up to a, uh, a battery pack out at a junkyard in um, Ohio so that he could actually check it out and see or no it wasn't Ohio it was St. Louis Missouri so he could make sure it worked and so I just offhanded, you know, mentioned that in the video. And, uh, well, I got contacted by a guy who says, you know what? I really want one of those. Uh, and I was like, oh, okay. Uh, when do you need it by? He's like, ah, as soon as possible. And he's like, well, how much are we talking? Well, the price was right. So <laughs> this is the weekend project here. I've got, um, so essentially, uh, it's kind of hard to tell, but see behind there, but I've got one of my uh, uh, eight channel servo controllers. It's kind of like my go-to development board now. Um, it does everything. It's got a, a DSPIC 33E series chip on there. It's got USB. It's got an SD card slot. It's got, you know, pretty much everything. And it's got CAN bus, which is what we need to talk to the Leaf Pack with. Now, unfortunately, uh, you don't want to lug around the 12-volt battery with you. So I've actually built a, um, this is the 5-volt uh, USB power supplies that you use to charge up your cell phone with. Uh, power banks, you know, they call them all kinds of stuff. So, on the back of this, I actually built a 5 volt to 12 volt boost converter. Um, yeah, it's kind of covering electrical tape. Uh, that's a, a huge inductor. Um, I covered it up because it's actually resting on top of stuff. Uh, let me come in, but you got some output capacitors and uh, this is the input capacitor here. I come around the other side. Hopefully you don't get too bad of motion sickness, but uh, yeah, my cell phone's not very good at this, but uh, if we focus here, you can kind of see the uh, little dev, or it's not even a dev board, it's my uh, servo controller board's been soldered down there, uh, contrast adjust for the LCD, and uh, yeah, other than that, uh, you might be wondering where the MOSFET and the diodes and everything are, well, they're actually located down underneath here. So you're not supposed to build switch mode power supplies on perf board, but this is a prototype. And uh, if you keep the loop, the loop area is very small, so it should be okay. Um, this is the end channel MOSFET over here, and this is the uh, shot key diode here. And that little resistor's for the gate to keep it pulled down when the system's off. But anyways, uh, you want to see it run, so. <laughs> oh, I've got the, uh, I do have the scope hooked up. Uh, the bottom line is uh, right now at ground, that's the output voltage, and then this other one is the um, PWM uh, for the uh, gate of the end channel MOSFET that I'm using to do the boost conversion. And uh, we'll go ahead and flip her on here. We just click the on button on the power bank, get a nice little thing, and we're already up. I'm telling it to output uh, 11.5 volts, uh, not 12. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you why here in a second, but... Um, this is my load. I have, uh, these are 10 ohm resistors, and there are three of them in series. And so we got 30 ohms uh, divided by 11.5 volts. And I chose, I had to back down to 11.5 volts because, um, uh, well, there's two real reasons. One is with, with that inefficiencies powering the display and the microcontroller, I'm pulling almost an amp from these, uh, this bank. And uh, that's the max they can do. So if I go a little bit higher, I end up kicking it out. So... I lowered that just to keep within the um, thing. So we can put out about 400 milliamps here. And, uh, oh, I can show you on the screen here. So that was it starting up from completely off into a full load. Uh, so you can see this is the 12 volts out, or 11.5 volts out. And then this is the uh, MOSFET, so it's on. And then we're storing energy in the inductor, releasing it, storing it, releasing, storing, releasing. And if you do the math on there, we're in continuous conduction mode, and this will be, um, if, if you did five, 
it, to get up to 11 and a half, it's a little bit more than double, so you can see it's more than double. And uh, let's see, what else do we got? Um, yeah, oh, uh, I can take away the load, so if I unplug this, so now we just went from a uh, full 400 milliamp load down to uh, no load, and we're still regulating at 11.5 volts. The 5 volts is the actual voltage of the uh, power uh, uh, power bank. So you can see when I click this on here. Oh, can I? I can't see it. There you go. It's hard to do it while looking at the, the screen on the phone. But uh, you can see under load, it is around exactly around 5 volts, and then no load. Load, no load. You can see my meter bumps up a little bit just because uh, I've got all, all the current is actually going through this little blue wire right here, so it's there's some uh, voltage losses. But uh, I'll, I'm going to do this while I show you the screen here. So that's it under full load. Let it focus. Focus. There you go. So that's under full load, and then if I release this, no load. Full load, no load, full load, no load, full load, no load. So it's, it's once it gets in the ballpark, it's regulated pretty good. I'm just doing a proportional integral controller, pretty simple. There's nothing amazing going on there. Uh, it just needs to get in the ballpark um, just to power this. So, um, yeah, oh, uh, the reason why I'm putting out 11.5 instead of 12 volts, uh, other than drawing too much current from the power bank, um, my uh, uh, I can only set it to uh, so this is my DAC my RDAC I can only set it to 2.37 volts um, which puts me at 11.859 volts uh, with my voltage divider that I've got on there so that uh, means that if I get above 11.85 volts my comparator trips and then it, it shuts off the PWM engine for that cycle um, you guys probably don't know what I'm talking about, so let me flip over to the data sheet. So, inside the microcontroller, there's a resistor DAC. You can see we've got this eight resistors here and eight resistors here, and then um, six. There's 16 resistors through there, and so I've I've got it as high as I can go, and, and the voltage that I'm getting. Uh, so I've got it routed uh, from 3.3 uh, volts is routed through to ground by turning on the appropriate registers and then I've set this register to grab the um, most highest point here and that goes out through here into the reference which goes to uh, I don't remember where it's at did I go the right way? yeah I gotta go through all these functions I'm not using and eventually we get to the comparator. It's in here somewhere. Here you go. So, which one is Here we go. So all that, that V reference that I was just talking about, that's right here coming in, right? So I'm comparing that to... I've bound or mapped a C in C2 into over to here, so it compares to, and then uh, this actually also goes off to my A to D converter. So that's what's reading the uh, voltage here. That's 11.5 volts is actually reading um, from the A to D converter, but then simultaneously it goes into this comparator. So what that does is essentially when I do this and unload it, and a boost converter that normally causes the voltage to spike crazy. That comparator catches it faster than my uh, PID loop, my uh, proportional integral loop is running at. So it allows me to catch that spike and then shut it down, shut down the PWM. So if you, you can kind of see how it gets the, it gets really small like that. It actually goes to zero if it spikes up above 11.8 volts. So that protects the uh, output from ever getting too high. But because of, uh, I didn't want to go back and recalculate everything and change the resistors, I was lazy. I have already had um, uh, these guys right here. So it's a, uh, this rail is being read by a 40K and a 10K resistor. So it's causing a, uh, essentially divide by five. So 
some if there's um you know that allows me to read uh, higher voltages because I can only do my A to D converter can only do zero to three point three volts. But uh, yeah, so anyways, <laughs> there's a reason why it's set to eleven point five. That's because I needed to be below this eleven point eight six volts value. Otherwise, uh, no PWM would happen. It would just uh, always be over voltage and shut itself down. It would just hover around this this point, but then it wouldn't be using the uh, PI controller and it would be really noisy and bad. Whereas, you know, once it's locked in, it's it's rock stable under any condition, any load. It's not got any kind of um, crazy waviness or anything to it. Even, even under no load, and I say no load, but you can see it's nice and stable. But uh, even under no load, uh, there's actually a um, little LED back here. <laughs> that is the minimum load. Um, you can kind of see it glowing there if it focuses. All right, focus. There you go. You can see it. There's a little green LED. It's not visible from the outside, but, you know, it's there. And I can flip. So that's with the load on, with the load off, with the load on, with the load off. You know, you can't even see it change. So it's pretty stable. Anyways, this video ended up being a lot longer. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so anyways, the uh, next part is uh, all of this will fit in this little box. Um, I got a big hole here for the uh, USB plug to come in because it's they're pretty sizable. And then the other side's got a little hole on it for a cable, which I haven't made yet, that goes to this connector. Um, hopefully the next video you see is uh, this all boxed up and plugged in. That's why I wanted to take a video because uh, once I box it up, I'm probably not going to take it apart again. And um, yeah, so uh, that's all working. Um, so I can to turn it off, you just press and hold the button on the power bank and everything shuts off. I guess I can show you what the other side looks like. So here's a big inductor. It's about 10 times bigger than it actually needs to be. And then um, my uh, servo controller, which is mounted upside down. And actually, the um, programming connector is made to be uh, mounted either direction, so that's convenient. And there's a few resistors and capacitors and everything so yeah these are both output caps and then this is the input cap uh, I actually had just this one on there and I couldn't get my loop stable and I actually had to add more capacitance and it was happy it was fine under light loads but under max load it was uh, it was oscillating really bad and that's because there wasn't enough capacitance so yeah uh, it's trial and error I guess uh, or you could do math <laughs> one of the two but anyways uh, yeah uh, I think this is a cool little pro weekend project so uh Thanks for watching. Bye.